What I want to know is from these agents that are so-called scared of Zillow is give me the roadmap of where we are now, point A, to point B, them completely monopolizing the industry and wiping real estate agents off the map. With everything that's going on in today's day and age in terms of Zello coming in and becoming a brokerage, uh, EXP making a major, major impact in the real estate game. Mm. What's your, this is a twofold question, all right? One, what's your outtake in that whole development? And two, how do you think agents should be able to, should move forward with this, with everything that's going on in today's uh, day and age, where everything changed in real estate. Yeah, I mean, I talked to an agent yesterday, and she's scared to death about Zillow taking over, monopolizing the industry, wiping real estate's off uh, agents off the map. Says she was going to quit checking the box to uh, syndicate her listings on Zillow, and I'm like, why? That's only shooting yourself in the foot. Your buyers aren't going to see it, and your sellers are going to get mad that it's not on Zillow, right? I said, listen to me. Zillow has done nothing but help you, right? Everybody's looking at Zillow like like it's this entity that is out to get us and and maybe they do have some kind of hidden agenda and it, it is wise to be paranoid i guess to a certain extent about things right and definitely watch it like i said i am so incredibly interested i'm just drawn to watching all this happen in real time i'm just love watching the earnings reports what they're doing what the acquisitions they it's just so so interesting to me and to try to sit back and figure out why people are why these companies are doing what they're doing at the end of the day all these companies they've got one thing in common okay when you look at google zillow apple facebook amazon their drug of choice is data okay they're spending billions and billions of dollars on data and what is data data is literally a virtual human <laughs> they're just they're buying virtual human they're buying you they're buying you they're buying your contact information your email your behaviors everything that they can get about you they're buying that either through like your behaviors on their website or running ads or doing this or that and so what you need to do is you need to think of yourself we need to think of our real estate business the same way that these large corporations think of their companies okay we need to really pay attention nobody's really paying attention to the fact that what they're doing is is they're collecting data and the amount of data that they have it ends up being the bottom line of the equity of their company you know the data that they have equals what the customers that they have and the customers they have that are willing to do business with them is literally what the company's worth i mean we trade stocks on the future earnings of companies which is determined by what we think the database of clients are that will do business with them in the future right and so we need to be data collectors first and real estate agents second every day when we wake up our, our main objective needs to be how do we get more data how do we get to more people in our market talk to them see how they're doing let them know who we are that we're here to help collect their information put that information in somewhere that we can build our personal brand with them from that point for forward right how can we run ads online to, to collect data so that we can then use that data to build more personal brand how can we collect more and more and more data of people in our market because again let's go back to market share that is the definition for me of market share i want as much market share as i can get the reason why i'm able to sell 100 properties a year and still do things like this and coach and do videos and podcasts podcasts and all that stuff is because I have a, I have enough data, right? I have enough data of potential clients and customers and prospects in my local real estate market. I have enough of their data that I built personal brand with that produces a hundred deals a year without me having to chase business. Now, if I wanted to get aggressive with real estate, I, this is, I have a completely passive real estate business. I am so focused on the coaching and building this other, you know, monster, this global brand, right? My real estate business is 100% passive in terms of getting deals. Once I get the deal, I'm going to work the deal. I spent a lot of my morning this morning, you know, checking on my deals and talking to clients and stuff. So, I mean, I'm still working in the deals, but I do nothing to get the deals. They come to me and tell me what they want, and then I help them get it. That's the kind of business you want. And it all comes from collecting data. It doesn't matter what Zillow, what I want to know is from these agents that are so-called scared of Zillow is give me the roadmap of where we are now, point A to point B, them completely monopolizing the industry and wiping real estate agents off the map. Give me the the play-by-play -play 
of how that actually happens from where we are right now because i i it's it's not even on the radar for me maybe i'm like maybe i'm naive or i'm missing something but i don't i i see nothing even on the horizon that tells me that there's a sure you may have somebody out there sure like there's a lot of people out there that are like yeah you know it'd be real nice if i could wipe out real estate agents and make all that all them billions of course there's probably a lot of people that say that but give me a play-by-play give me a roadmap and I may eat my words in 30, 40 years. I don't know, right? I don't know how all this is going to play out. I'm just saying, give me the, give me the roadmap from here. Like, what does it look like? You know what I mean? Um, Ricky, as, as you're building your foundation, you mentioned that you want to become a global entity in terms of your growth. Um, what does that look like for you? There's a lot of different things, right? So I have a global brand. Okay. So just through social media, I've got followers all over the world, um, which is incredible. Um, I have people reach out to me from all over the world and uh, I've built really incredible relationships with with these people and um, you know listen relationships is the name of the game you never know where a relationship is going to lead you in terms of an opportunity and and here, here here's the punchline you don't build relationships and help people just because there might be an opportunity for some kind of favorable monetary outcome what you need to think of this is when you're really going to go to the next level because like there's stages to this like when i first realized that i needed to be more about the relationship over the transaction um, when i got back in the business i couldn't go cold turkey and just say okay i'm getting away from high pressure i'm just going to go all low pressure. I went 50 50. Sometimes I was like, Hey, you want to buy or sell? And sometimes I was just like, Hey, is there anything I can do to help you? I was 50 50. And so it took me some time to morph into where I was more like 75 25. And then I was like 90 10, you know, and now I'm a, a complete 95 5, right? 95 5 is where I want to be. I want to be 95% low pressure, 5% high pressure. I want to build that relationship and know when to strike, you know, but at the end of the day, when you get to that point, then you're still striking. Okay. And this is what I want, this is what I want the takeaway here. You're still striking. And so that strike is still, it still means that you're still there for some kind of monetary or some something for you to gain kind of deal. And so what I'm saying is once you get to that level and then you realize that there's an even, there's an even higher level of this whole thing. Whereas you help people that have no chance at all to do anything for you, that's when you see your business really explode. When you start helping just anybody, regardless if they can help you or not, right? That's when you see things take a turn and really, you know, explode in your life, in your business. Um, you know, so, so there's steps to it. You know, I never tell any of these high pressure guys when they start looking at my stuff to just go cold turkey and start doing everything exactly the way I do it, you know, just dabble in it and then kind of progress and take it to a new place. I want to know what made you decide to share so much knowledge? Like, why not just keep some of that secret to yourself? Why decide to just release your education and just want to share your education with the people or with other agents? You know what, man? I think it's because when I started doing that, people told me that was the most retarded thing to do in the world. They told me that that was the worst thing that I could have. They were so, people in my office were mad at me for giving away the secrets. <laughs> you know, their friends and family, they didn't understand it. They didn't understand it. But see, here, here's what I knew that they can't wrap their mind around. They, they didn't know what I had really been through, right? But you don't know what was actually going through my mind during those years of, the, of that period of time, right? And, and what I learned through that, bro, listen, the, one of the biggest lessons I learned was that closings happen every single day right? No matter what the market does, closings happen every day forever, right? If you look at 9-11.com crash 2008, the pandemic, right? Nothing but massive amounts of closings during the scariest times in history, right? And in, in our lifetime. One thing that I realized, man, is that business is 100 million percent unlimited. You cannot do every single deal ever that's available to each and every agent. You, every agent can be like the number one agent. <laughs> like, every, like, they're like, Oh no, Ricky. No, no, no. There's only so much, right? There's only so much. And I beg to differ. I just beg to differ, man, because I look at it on more than just what we do this year. I mean, too, like, I'm, let's take it a step further. I look at more than just what's available this year. I'm looking at the future growth of the industry.